And that's the BBC News tonight. Good night. Now the region's news. Good evening. An Essex teenager who crashed his van after a high-speed chase by police has died of his injuries. 18-year-old Nicholas Searle from Chelmsford was tailed by a police patrol car after jumping traffic lights in Brentwood 10 days ago. He crashed his minivan into a tree after it hit a curb. Following the accident, he was taken to the head injuries unit at Old Church Hospital. Ipswich Airport could soon be returned to the control of the Borough Council following a deal with the leaseholders Harvest Air. There's been a dispute over its future since a council report recommended a housing development on the site. Harvest Air said it had invested half a million pounds in the airport and would refuse to go. Demolition experts have arrived at the Fengate Industrial Estate in Peterborough to pull down buildings shattered in the explosion on Wednesday. Police using specially trained dogs have searched the area for unexploded detonators from the shipment being delivered to a fireworks factory. They're now satisfied that the site is clear. A fireman died and 83 people were hurt in the blast. Two firemen are still in intensive care at Peterborough District Hospital. Firemen were called to a farm in Essex today after 60,000 gallons of milk residue spilt from a burst tank. The accident happened at the Abbott Hall farm near Braintree. Engineers from Anglian Water had to open sluice gates in nearby drains to wash the liquid away. Pilgrims from across the country have converged on Walsingham in Norfolk today for the traditional Easter celebrations. Among the pilgrims carrying wooden crosses were students from as far away as Newcastle and Bristol. They carried the crosses as a public demonstration of their commitment to Christianity. Now in its 41st year, the student crosswalk is the longest running pilgrimage to Walsingham. The Norfolk village has had a focal point for Christians in Britain since before the Middle Ages. Well, that's all the news for tonight. Don't forget to join us for Look East Extra tomorrow afternoon at 5.15. Until then, a very good night. The big sporting event taking place tomorrow must be surely the boat race. I'm sure there's more than a few people are glad it didn't take place today. Tomorrow should be a better day wind-wise, just a gentle breeze from the southwest. The temperature around about 10. But I think there could be some rain around before the race actually gets underway. We can see on this evening's satellite picture where the next development has taken place out here in the mid-Atlantic. That's going to rush towards the British Isles, bringing yet more rain. But tonight, most places, in fact, are going to be dry. Just one or two wintry showers here in northern and western Scotland. A touch of frost for Scotland, perhaps even a touch of ground frost for the south. But late in the night, we'll find more cloud and rain coming into the southwest. There's tomorrow's weather chart. Not really very pretty, unless, of course, you live in northeastern Scotland, northeastern England. That's where the best of the weather is going to be. Most places will, in fact, start quite bright and quite sunny tomorrow. Still those showers around in the north and west, with the cloud and rain edging into northern Ireland and the rest of England and Wales. Quite mild down in the south, 12, that's 54, with some mist and fog patches, 6 in the north, that's only 43. On to Sunday, quite mild and bright and warm for a time down here in the southeast. Quite a lot of cloud and rain around in the centre and yet more showers up in the northwest. And Monday, could be a deal of cloud to clear away from England and Wales, rain too, brighter north, and then we're back into the showers. That's it from me. Spring evenings are brighter on BBC One. Saturday starts with medicine in the outback as the flying doctors take to the air. Then at five past six, Jim fixes it for Katie and Nicola to hunt a needle in a haystack. At 6.40, cobbers little and large. You remind me of a place in Australia. Oh. Obviously, Sydney. Now the Barrier Reef, it's wet and slimy. <laughs> at 7.15, more stars in the making, as Bob says, opportunity knocks. And Columbo's back at five past eight, turning wine connoisseur. I know exactly what I want. I'm just praying that they have it. At 9.50, lend your ears for Carrot's particular style of confidential. And at 10.25, the film Honky Tonk Freeway leads to a jumbo tourist trap. Let her go! I'm telling you, people will drive 35 miles just to see a water skiing elephant. And with the gospel according to St. Matthew and the film The Jericho Mile, that's Saturday night on BBC One. In five minutes over on two, the early frames in the snooker final from Bournemouth as England take on the rest of the world. Then at 11.15 on two, Catherine Hepburn presents a fascinating and personal portrait of the man who was so much part of her life. Recollections, home movies, rare newsreel footage, and of course, film clips. The Spencer Tracy legacy. Here on BBC One, life's turned upside down for Goldie Horn and Chevy Chase in our Neil Simon comedy, 
seems like old times.